Hello, I am Silicon Thaumaturgy, and welcome to my Deep Dive series. Ironically, generating good images in stable diffusion seems to be more of an art than a science. There's a lot of conflicting information floating around in the community about how to get good results. This inspired me to design experiments to isolate and test the impact of certain settings. Today, we are going to look at the hot mess that is the 19 samplers currently available in the stable diffusion automatic 1111 GUI and try to make recommendations about which should actually be used. With that out of the way, let's get started. Initially, I ran a variety of prompts off of Lexica.art with each sampler at various steps with seed and CFG held constant. I tried to use different subject matter like portraits, full body people, animals, and landscapes to ensure that the subject matter did not impact the results. However, in the end, I don't think subject matter made much of an impact. After compiling data for about 10 of these, I analyzed it to see which samplers overlapped in their outputs, which samplers converged, and which samplers kept changing over the entire 150 steps. First, and most interestingly, I found that many samplers were strongly or completely correlated in what they output. Overall, I found three clusters with one outlier. Group 1 and Group 1B usually share the same output, but Group 1B samplers, all of which end in Keras, can have a different output. DDIM was slightly strange as it could result in either a Group 1 or a Group 1B output. Group 2 is a bit more varied. Group 2A and Group 2B are mostly distinct, but can have the same output. Euler A and DPM Adaptive, like DDIM, are wildcards. In roughly equal proportions, Euler A results in a Group 2A output, a Group 2B output, or a unique output. DPDM Adaptive was usually unique, but occasionally matched Euler A or Group 2A. The last cluster consists of the new SDE samplers. They were typically unique, but could occasionally have the same output. As for DPM Fast, well, DPM Fast is off in the corner doing DPM Fast things by itself. Next, let's talk about convergence. Since I can already imagine a chorus of with actuallys in the comments section for math nerds, I'm going to add a disclaimer now that this is a, a qualitative evaluation by me. For the purposes of this video, convergence is whether the sampler gets to a specific output within 150 steps that doesn't change substantially when more steps are performed. The outcome is roughly split by the group. All of the Group 1 and Group 1B samplers converge. In addition, DPM Adaptive is considered converged because it only has one output regardless of steps, and DPM++ SDE Keras from Group 3 also converges. In contrast, almost all the samplers from Group 2 did not converge. The only exception to this was DPM Adaptive. Additionally, DPM Fast does not converge. I also put DPM++ SDE as some convergence. While it did not converge as strongly as the Group 1 and Group 1B samplers, it exhibited less variation with more steps compared to the Group 2 samplers. Next up is processing speed. This is not how many steps it takes to reach an image, but instead a measure of how much computing power each step takes. Credit to you, Snare Emu, on Reddit for doing this first. All I did was verify the results by testing some of the samplers. All of the samplers except one are in two buckets, fast or slow. Slow samplers take twice as long per step as fast samplers. The oddball, DPM adaptive, removes steps as a variable and instead uses CFG. Finally, I tested to see how many steps on average it took for samplers to get to a decent output. This is mostly a qualitative judgment, 
so don't draw too much meaning into it. For group one in particular, all the samplers except one were very, very close in number of steps required to get a decent image. In the other notable finding, we found out that DPM fast isn't. So now we've characterized all these samplers. How do we make sense out of this? Which samplers do I use? Don't worry, I got you covered. First up, let's cover group one. Between group one and group one B, there are 10 samplers, which is more than the number of all the other samplers combined. Even worse, these samplers seem to, on average, generate the lowest quality images. The two oddballs are Hewn, which has slower processing, and PLMS, which needs more steps. In terms of the output itself, the samplers tend to emphasize different aspects. For example, Hewn is very sharp, while Euler is more soft. But the main difference seems to occur in the background. Honestly, I really can't make an objective case to only use particular samplers over others in this group. That said, I recommend you compare the outputs over various prompts to see which styles you like and keep at least one in group one and one in group B to use. Personally, I selected three. DPM plus plus two M, which is group one, DPM plus plus two M Keras, which is group one B, and Hewn. Honorable mention goes to DDIM due to its speed and versatility in groups one and one B. The DPM++ 2M samplers were selected arbitrarily based on them being the newest samplers and having a very slight edge in the number of steps needed. I selected Hewn because I liked the sharp and bold outputs. However, I would not recommend using it for exploration slash screening because of the slow processing speed. Wow, we've just knocked out six or seven samplers, but we're not done yet. Just like in group one, there are a couple easy eliminations in the rest of the samplers. DPM2A and DPM2A Keras appear to be inferior versions of DPM++2S and DPM++2SA Keras, respectively. While all of these methods are slow processing, DPM2A Keras and DPM2A take over 20 steps to get to a decent image, while DPM++2SA and DPM++2SA Keras usually look good by 15, make them more efficient to use for exploration and screening. There are also two samplers I consider a bit less useful and that you might use or not use as you prefer. DPM Fast has unique output and is non-convergent. However, DPM Fast also has the highest step count among all samplers to get decent images. It also has a tendency to be a bit janky. Next is DPM Adaptive. Like I said before, DPM Adaptive eliminates steps as a variable and uses CFG instead, and typically results in unique images. However, to me, this gives it disadvantages in both producing high-quality images and in exploration slash screening. Since the number of steps isn't a variable, you can't use steps to make a better version of a good image. On the other hand, since processing time is constant, this makes it bad at exploration slash screening because that processing time is slower at 20 steps than even the slow samplers. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, we're gonna put it all together, give you the too long didn't read. Here are the recommended core and expanded samplers to get the maximum variety with the fewest samples. From group one, DPM plus plus 2M. From group 1B, DPM plus plus 2M Keras. Group 2A, DPM plus plus 2SA. Group 2B, DPM plus plus 2A Keras. And then group 2 slash unique Euler A. And in group 3, DPM plus plus SDE and DPM plus plus SDE Keras. In addition, the four optional or expanded samplers I recommend are DPM Adaptive, DPM Fast, Hewn, and DDIM. Now that we know which samplers we no longer want to use, 
I can show you how to deactivate them in the Automatic 1111 Web GUI interface. Simply go to the Settings tab, scroll all the way to the bottom, and select the samplers you want to no longer appear. Scroll back up and click Apply. However, note that you will need to close the command line window and then restart that for these changes to take effect. And that concludes our deep dive into samplers. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, like and subscribe as I want to put out more in the future. If there are any particular topics around AI image generation you'd like me to make a video over, don't be afraid to leave a comment. As a disclaimer, Stable Diffusion and the WebGUI are rapidly evolving. It is quite possible that the contents of this video will start to become obsolete within weeks or even days. So don't be mad when it happens, just a polite reminder would be nice. Thanks and goodbye.